Welcome back, folks, to the Bull Podcast and uh, brought to you by Always by Custom Bell Firearms Manufacturing based right here at the Bull And so if you want to come in and check out our complete line of ARs, be sure to do so, as well as uh, um, stop by one of our great dealers. We have uh, about six or seven across Kansas and Missouri currently, and that's growing. So uh, we're excited about that, but excited also today. Unfortunately, we're doing it by Zoom again, but that's the, the world we live in, but we're happy to have him, and that's Travis Lovelady. Travis, it's great to have you. You and I have been friends for long, it seems like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, good, yeah. good to talk to you, even if it is on Zoom. Uh, Travis is actually in Hayes right now, so um, and I'm in Kansas City, so that's a little far piece between, So, yeah. but uh Travis, you're the the state rep for the NRA for the state of Kansas. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. State director for the NRA in uh, Kansas, and I also do Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Colorado. And then you're also the vice president of the Kansas State Rifle Association. And uh, some folks may, from our, you know, down here, or listeners or watchers, because uh, we broadcast on YouTube, uh, don't know what the Kansas State Rifle Association is. What uh, what do you guys do predominantly within uh, the state uh, for folks in the two A you know community? Yeah, absolutely. Well, every state has an NRA affiliate association, and the Kansas State and they and several states have numerous different two uh, A related groups, but. Um, the official NRA state affiliate is the Kansas State Rifle Association for Kansas. Uh, there's there's a board which we've served on previously together and came friends through that. And uh, right, I used to be Northwest Quadrant Director yeah. um, on the board, and now I'm Vice President and um, been nominated to uh, be President at the annual meeting next weekend. So. I may, uh, Hiding. and it's going to be in. Hayes. I may end up being president soon. <laughs> yeah, it, it just happens to be in Hayes, so yeah. try to move it around by congressional district, and it just happens to be in the first Great. congressional district this time, and in Hayes. Yeah, and if anybody wants to find out about the KSRA, they can just go to the website KansasRifle.org. Yep, there you go. Um, today we bring in uh, tra- Travis on to talk about Kansas legislation. And the, and, and the gun stuff that's going on in Topeka, you know, we think some probably have already thought, well, it's over with. Uh, isn't the session over? <laughs> it's not yet. Um, where does that stand? So folks understand kind of in the time frame, where, where are the legislators at right now? Sure. Well, the Kansas legislature meets for a 90 day session. Mm-hmm. They go from January through March take most of April off and then um, except for a few days at the beginning and then they come back in early May. So they're coming back May 3rd, Monday for what they call veto session. Mm -hmm. And this year it's actually is a true veto session. There's no Republican governor to to sign bills. And and in fact, the Democrat governor vetoed the most bills in modern history. And three of those were, were, yeah, it's an unprecedented number of bills. She, she was on a veto rama as what uh, President, Senate President Ty Masterson called it. And he said, we're going to go on a veto override rama in response. Yeah. So there's going to there's be a lot of attempts to override a lot of those vetoes. And three of those are specifically rate related to gun issues and KSRA, NRA issues. What are those bills? Uh, if we can go through them one by one and just help un- folks understand. And then we'll maybe get to some action points at the end. Certainly. So the uh, the two bills that the NRA is definitely engaged on. Uh, the first one is about full is about reciprocity slash full recognition. Mm-hmm. So we recognize all other states' permits, and they recognize all our permits. Um, and then also that bill creates a new provisional permit for 18, 19, and twenty year olds to be able to carry. And so that's something new. And now then it also, well, for reciprocity purposes, it rather than just lower our permit age to 18, 
it was smarter to create a new permit and we just called it a provisional permit kind of like provisional driver's license Mm -hmm. even though all the requirements and uh, rights are the same just to separate those two out it made more sense to do so because we didn't want some liberal attorney general in a in another state to say oh well they lowered their permit age we're not going to recognize their permits anymore but if we separate them out they don't have to recognize both permits they can they can just continue to recognize just the one and don't have to recognize the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, we prefer all the states recognize both and all the way to 18. Uh, but that gives a, we don't want to give a liberal attorney general in another state a reason to not recognize our permits any longer. So that's what that's all about. Uh, it gives Kansans more rights, but also hopefully uh, maintains our large number of states where you can carry with your Kansas permit. I remember you and I working on some of that. Uh, back all the way back maybe in 2016 2017 that idea was brought up by the attorney general wasn't it that's right that's right it was first brought forth to the legislature and to us on the ksra by the attorney general in 2017 and the legislature has not acted yet the house has passed it several times the senate uh never voted on it they refused to take it up um due to the former majority leader not wanting to deal with the issue. So uh, there's an entirely new Senate now, a good conservative Senate that passed it easily, sent it to the governor's desk and strong votes in the House and Senate. Um, so we're, we just have to override the veto now because we don't have a Republican governor like we did in 2017. So it's just a different dynamic. Uh, there's, there's two other pieces of that bill. Uh, one, it authorizes the attorney general to issue Uh, licenses, what he's calling an alternative license to carry during declared states of emergency, disaster emergency. Mm -hmm. What he found out last year was during, during the pandemic, during the emergencies, when, when their offices were locked down, Mm -hmm. they could, they could process renewals, Yeah, but they, they couldn't process new permits. So they were stuck, stuck in that issue, not able to do that. I know for some, in fact, one of our staff members went through that situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was going through a per, you know, carry permit process and, or, uh, you know, still carry, hang on a license, excuse me, to carry yeah. uh, precisely. And, and that, that very thing happened. And yeah, um, so that, that fixes that for them. Uh, yeah. Good. And then, and then we had some customers too that were, because we do have concealed carry classes here at the bullet hole, uh, yeah. all the time. That were frustrated. I went through the class and doggone it, you know. So I, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. That that's a good thing. And that was a separate bill that we we rolled into this one. So that's just another provision in in, in this bill. And then the final provision is a restoration of rights process. So if you uh, it restores your right to possess a firearm upon expungement of certain lesser crimes. So there's a there's you know an example is your a lot you know there's a time period that has to pass but you were uh, unfortunately did something stupid yeah convicted of a crime but then you also happened just happened to have a gun in the glove box at the time and they slapped on a gun charge at the same time uh, so you're able to get that expunged serve the the cooling off period there for a number of years and then petition the court to get your rights back and we, th- we think that's a good thing we think um, certainly for those lesser crimes you shouldn't you shouldn't serve a lifetime sentence of not being able to have your, your constitutional rights so yeah it's creating new restoration of rights process for those for those crimes now that's all no. In one bill, then all those provisions are in one bill. In in the mm-hmm. bill number, if anybody's interested, is that's House Bill twenty fifty eight. Okay, in the um, and it passed the House and the Senate, uh, from my understanding, uh, with um, about eighty votes in the House. Um, and yeah, there was there was eighty eighty seven the first time it passed the House, and then okay. twenty. 29 in the Senate. And so it, uh, but then when it came back to the house for the motion to concur, it only got 80 and we need 84. So we, we need to, we need to pick up a few more before it, it's able to override the governor's veto. So it was, we feel good in the Senate. We had 30 on, yeah, we had 30 on the final vote in the Senate. So we're feeling great there, but 
since it's a house bill, the veto override starts in the house. So it's got to be a vote in the house first. And that's what will happen next week on that, on, on all the bills, but definitely that one. And so people, if uh, they want to, and uh, on any of these pieces of legislation, if they, they really need to contact a representative, uh, yeah. find out who they are. They can, can go to, uh, what is it? Is it kslegislature.org? Um, yeah. And, and we make it real easy for them if they're signed up for the NRA ILA alerts. Okay. We send out the, we send it out, um, and you can sign up for that by texting NRA to two five zero one seven. So NRA, easy enough, just a two five zero one seven, and that'll get you the text message uh, for those alerts. Or you can go to NRAILA dot org, and then if you search up Kansas. You can find the the latest alerts, look at them, and there's a take action button. Mm -hmm. And when you type up your address, it'll bring up your representative and senator so that uh, you can email them just right through our process that we have on our on our website. And it makes it real easy for you. Okay. And so we leave that up to folks. So we're not necessarily a political organization or anything like that. We're, but we uh, do believe in the two A and uh, and all day. We uh, we use the hashtag around here two A all day. And so uh, yeah, um, we we do encourage folks to to you know become you know active in the political process uh, because hey, we the people, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike what some other people have said, but anyhow. <laughs> um, now, what's the other yeah. pieces of legislation that that are before the the House and Senate right now? Still, that were that were vetoed by the governor, by the way. Well, the the other uh, NRA initiative was something we've been working on also for a few years. It was um, a few years ago. Representative John Whitmer, who's now a radio host in Wichita. <laughs> um, brought the idea of a. Uh, setting up curriculum so that schools could teach uh, NRAs at Eagle Gun Safe program mm -hmm. and it's expanded since then it's uh, this bill was brought forth by representative Patrick Penn uh, working with uh, some other folks just to try and uh, get that program into the schools but then also working with wildlife and parks to offer for the older kids hunters education and also their BB gun program. So there's there's some options there. Uh, they can one or both or, or all three if they want. Uh, but some flexibility. But the bill just directs the Kansas State School Board um, Board of Education to go ahead and set up that curriculum based on NRA's at Eagle Gun Safe program and the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks existing hunter education in our schools or the BB gun programs. So that's, that's what that bill does. Um, it was unfortunate. We, we even had some Democrats that were hoping that, that she wouldn't veto, that she would just let it go into law without her signature, even if she didn't want to sign it. And, but just shows how radical she is. She vetoed that as well. And that's, that's another thing we're going to try and override the veto on. Um, it does, the this pointy part is that there's been a lot of smearing saying, ah, oh, the NRA is mandating its program. Well, we're not mandating anything. It just says based on because the the curriculum's already there. It's already been developed. It's yeah. a, it's been around for been around for decades and been proven to be effective. So it's already there for the state board, but if they want to develop their own program that's very similar, just based on those basic tenets of the Eddie Eagle program, they can do so. But why reinvent the wheel when it's already there and the materials are free? So it's already there. Same thing with hunter education. It's easy for the wildlife and parks to get in there and, and give it to them. And, and it doesn't mandate upon the local school boards either. If the local school board has a vote that they want to implement that curriculum in their school, they can do so, but they're not mandated to do so. If they don't want to do anything, they don't have to. So mm. it's not a it's not a mandate like like she uh, smeared it to be. So it's it's just optional. It's a great thing. Teaching firearm safety and gun safety education in schools is something that should make a big difference if if the schools will actually do it. Yeah, 
but we got to but we got to get there. We got to override <laughs> the veto first. And then the third piece of legislation. What what is it? The third piece, which should have been non controversial, was you know we have a number of distinct license plates in the state to, that help um, Kansans support organizations of their choice. And so we're seeing this happen. Lots of nonprofits are doing this and doing, you know, able to not only have a fun license plate on your car for a for an organization you choose and want to support and openly support, and <laughs> but you get to do it in a fun way instead of having one of those boring mandated <laughs> state, state of Kansas license plates. Yeah. Um, uh, so what the Kansas State Rifle Association a few years back and working with Representative Blake Carpenter said was, well, heck, why don't we have one of those? That'd be pretty cool. And what would the most people want to have so that we can, you know, create a good financial stream for the for the organization? Mm-hmm. And we thought, well, how about how about the Gadsden flag? Don't tread on me, snake. I mean, everybody thinks that's awesome. Everybody's putting that on the front of their car. Of course they'd want, yeah, all right, right? <laughs> of course they'd want to put it on their on the back. So, you know. It's, we even get we even give out the free stickers for for NRA, so it's it's a really, really something that signifies freedom and liberty within the gun rights movement. We're you know we're proud of the history of the founding, what that flag stood meant to, to us and our yeah. in our country's founding, and ever, ever since. Um, but unfortunately, the, the uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sorry, yeah, got it. lost your your video there for a second. There we go. Sorry, I had a call there, but un, un, unfortunately, the uh, I guess woke liberals in Johnson County have decided that it's now racist to have that that sticker or that that thing on a, on a license plate, and hmm. I guess they're. Um, it was unfortunate the uh, the guy who designed it did some great things, but he also owned slaves. And so, like most you know wealthy individuals in this country at that time frame, there was a lot of that. And many of them, but they're just trying to erase all the founding fathers and their contributions to our country because of that as well. I mean, there's no doubt every single person who who voted for that bill believes slavery is an abomination, but we're holding historical figures to the same um, standard that we hold ourselves now. And you, you, you can't, you can't do that. Things are entirely different back then than they are now. And uh, we know that, however, they're all they're trying to do is just smear this symbol that has become very popular within the gun rights movement. The anti gunners are just trying to use it to smear us, to smear a symbol that, everybody knows is, be, is very powerful and that's why they're so scared of it. And that's why they're trying to ban it. And that, uh, so and the you, governor did veto that as well. I, I didn't wear this shirt specifically today for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's our last, that's, that's part of our logo. Uh, yeah. Customville firearms manufacturing in the, is don't, don't step on the snake, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so it is so a it's, powerful thing. So on all of our all of our guns if anybody uh, buys one of our firearms it's it's engraved on the receiver in fact so uh, uh, yeah it's powerful yeah. powerful image. yeah so it's it's disappointing that they uh, have smeared something that had nothing to do with slavery other than a a, a, co- a a connection through the person who designed it i mean he didn't design it to say hey support slavery no it had nothing to do with that it was about you know, the revolutionary war and it's it had nothing to do with slavery so that's it's, it's too bad that they that they've done that but they do that for a lot of things nowadays if they if they can't win the argument on the merits they call it racist so these these are three pieces of legislation that are currently you know i mean next week you know we're talking today on friday um currently um the 30th here and so um my, as soon as Monday, uh, and this will actually go up uh, to air uh, over the weekend. Um, so if you're viewing this right now, and uh, maybe you're viewing it on Saturday, maybe you're viewing it on Sunday, or maybe you're listening to it on Saturday or Sunday, 
This is time sensitive material uh, that you want to get a hold of uh, your representative or, or senator, if that's your choice, um, to do so uh, about these these issues. And uh, like we said, we're not you know we don't run a big political you know organization here at the Bullet Hole, but we do want to keep people apprised of what's going on. And Travis is doing a great job of that in fighting for us uh, in Topeka. And um, so we appreciate that and, um, and what you do. We really do. And what the KSRA does. And, and, uh, and I think people don't realize sometimes what you guys do. And I, I, I've been behind it and seen the sausage <laughs> being made. And so I don't yeah. that together. But um, if folks want to, again, they want to contact, give us that information again. Okay, I want to, I, yeah, I want to get involved. I got mm -hmm. kind of in on the half in on this conversation. Okay, well, where, okay, where do I go? Can you give that to them again? That te they can text to get a hold of it or go to school? Yeah, absolutely. For, for NRA, if you want to get our text message alerts on what bills are coming up and how to take action, you text NRA to 25017. Okay. And if uh, you don't want to be uh, text about those things, you can hop on to our website, nraila.org, and then search up Kansas, and you'll find the alerts for Kansas. Um, alternatively, if you want to hop on Facebook, and that's your way you want to be involved, or, or Twitter, we've got, uh, or Instagram, actually, too. We've got Kansas State Rifle Association has both the regular um, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram for, for each the regular Kansas State Rifle Association and also for our political action committee that has info. So you can search up Kansas State Rifle Association and the Kansas State Rifle Association PAC. And there's tons of stuff on there. You can find all the info on on what's going on, who to contact, who the who who our targets are that we need to flip. Um, we've got uh, a number you can call listed on there and you can share and spread the message uh, if you want to override, whether it's the Gadsden flag, which I've got a great, great uh, meme I've been sharing on that one off of that page. And uh, that's got a lot of people more aware of this issue. So that's a great example. And we shared the NRA alerts so that you can also go in and uh, click that take action and be able to email your state representative and state senator really easily right off of that. You know, and, and just to kind of bring it to a personal level for you, I mean, you uh, as a high schooler, I believe, and as a college student at Fort Hayes State, uh, participated in, uh, you know, shooting sports. Um, yeah. And uh, due to this, to this day. <laughs> <laughs> not as, not as much as I would like. It's, uh, it's. It's not like it, not like it used to be when I was on the team. That's for sure. Yeah, well, a, one, one of the funny things, the, the folks in my position always, the joke we always make is that we're, we're too busy defending your rights to have much time to exercise them anymore. <laughs> it's exciting to see all the high schools that are, that are having, you know, getting teams. Um, yeah. and I think is the U S clay shooting association or what, something like that, that, uh, that's that they've got going on. That's exciting to see. And did they, did they yeah. have that when you were when you were in high school? At all? You know, there really there really wasn't. We we had some of that through 4-H. Um, hmm. We I really got involved in uh, in that through the Kansas State Sporting Clays Association, hmm. and so I was involved with that, and then a little bit of uh, trap shooting too. But def definitely on the Sporting Clays Association side. And then once I got to college. Um, Four days didn't have a team, but so we decided to um, try to figure out how to get that. And then they had just started one, and I hopped in. And I was like, "Hey, let's let's." That sounds like my right up my alley. So uh, I was in on on it pretty early, and now it's a national powerhouse. They've they've Are won really? na they've won oh. national championship after national championship against schools of all levels. So they're 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 really a, a shooting shotgun shooting powerhouse now. I did not realize that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Wichita State has a team as well, don't they? Yeah, Wichita State has a team. Kansas State had a has a team they did back when when we were when I was shooting too. So yeah, we've got quite a few. And then like you said, now the junior colleges are getting in on it, the high school's getting on it. So in Hayes, we've got Fort Hayes team and Hayes High as a team. So it's really awesome to see and 
Yeah. Um, we got to continue to support that. And if your local school doesn't have a, have a team yet, ask them why not and figure out how to get one started. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's really cool. And I know with ammo uh, being, you know, the way it is right now, <laughs> those shooting teams, uh, I don't know. I've, I've heard some different ways. Uh, I've actually helped one uh, team uh, in my local area uh, get yeah. some ammo, but uh they, they need that to be able to go out there and shoot. But, uh, no, that, yeah. that's exciting. I know it's been you, kind of years ago for you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting older, brother. <laughs> I hear you. I hear uh, you. And the gray is, for me, you're still, <laughs> still got to, you know, I'm losing it. I'm losing it up here, and I'm gaining the gray down here, and, and you're still, you know, sporting a nice, you yeah. know, market of here. There's- there's a lot more gray than there used to be. And I bl- I'll blame <laughs> politics on that for sure. <laughs> but uh, no, we appreciate you, Travis. And uh, if folks want to get hold of you personally, do you have a, an email address that, 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 that you give out to folks? Sure, absolutely. So my, my NRA email is T Couture, C O U T U R E hyphen L O V E. L A D Y mm-hmm. at N R A H Q dot org. So I know it's a really long one. Yeah. Um, uh, alternatively, if you hop onto the Kansas State Rifle Association website, kansasrifle.org, you can find my KSRA email on there. Um, and that, that'll, that's another way it reroutes it over to my personal email. So I'll, I'll be able to get that too. Very good. Well, I'm glad that that we we had the chance to get we 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 talked. Uh, oh, he must have got another call come in. Um, but we get to talk every once in a while and, and busy. Travis, we're, we're very very busy dude, and uh, I appreciate him taking time uh, to just. You, you think we were trying to override a few vetoes or something? I don't know. My phone <laughs> keeps ringing. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate your time, man. In in uh, what you're doing, I hope you have a good weekend this weekend uh, too. And uh, and folks, if if you want to get involved in the process, and then like I said, we the people, um, you know, the government is of and by and for the people. Um, and so, hey, we got to do some things. So, um, in the two well, is all. Well, I really appreciate it. You bet, man. You bet. And um, it's. It's great, and I, well, I'll have to come visit you there at the bullet hole. And, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've also got, before I forget, i got to put a plug in for, for Kelvin. I don't know if you had a chance to, to meet him yet. To Kelvin him. Curtis. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, our, he's our NRA grassroots. So we've got in, in Isla, which is what I work for, NRA, ILA, we got two departments, really, the lobbying side, which is my side, and then we got the grassroots side, which is going out. Uh, signing folks up, getting involved, speaking at your your local meetings about what all we can do to work together. And he's right there in in Johnson County, so yeah. he's he's close. And um, if you want if you want somebody to come speak at any kind of meeting and talk about what NRA is doing, he he'd love to do that for yeah. sure. And he'll he'll be at he'll be at the NRA in, or uh, KSR annual meeting, um, having an NRA booth next weekend too. And if you're interested. Sitting coming to the annual meeting, we'd love to have a <laughs> love to have as many people as we can get. I know it's a bit of a drive out there, but you know us folks from Hayes, we'll drive to Johnson County when the uh, when the when the meeting's there too. So, <laughs> it, it, but I, Kelvin's got a lot of these. He's we've yeah. been we ever since the governor vetoed the bill, we can't keep these things. They're they're just flying out. Um, Kelvin's been ordering more of them, and he's he's happy to help. Uh, with your organization if you just have questions about what's going on or want to know what more you can do and um heck we both we both need to come see you at the bullet hole sometime too yeah absolutely man we'd love to have you and um we of course the bullet hole for folks who don't know uh the bullet hole podcast here uh, if you're listening and maybe you're we, we have folks that, that listen far away um, we're the largest indoor shooting range in Kansas City. We're the oldest indoor shooting range in Kansas City. I'm actually s- sitting right now in the original Hodgson facility. Uh, the Hodgson family started the bullet hole uh, back in 1967 and the, the whole the whole business. And, it, uh, and then they moved their headquarters just down the street. So 
a lot yeah, of history, right? Awesome. Here. And and we're uh, we're making things. Our our owner Jim Anderson is making things better all the time, um, and leading us in a, in a very very positive direction. We're be going to be having our rifle range. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have our rifle range opened up within the next sixty days or so, and. Wow. Uh, so uh, that uh, that's going to be exciting. Uh, so um, that's great. That's uh, great. Our, we do have our tactical bays going and, and everything like that. So we're we're uh, we're a happening place right now, and, and got some some great improvements that are going on um, uh, here in the facility. So yeah, come on down and see us, man. Have, have Kelvin. Yeah. Here. Tell him to tell yeah him to come on in, man. So absolutely, and you know it's it's hard to. There's no way to adequately <laughs> talk about how much the Hodgins have meant to the gun rights movement in Kansas. That's for sure. They are, have always been right there for us on every step of the way. Yeah. They do. And of course, um, everything you, you guys have done, Jim's done to make the bullet hole what it is. It's pretty awesome to see. But if you're, if you're looking, you want to, you want to get involved with NRA grassroots. Um, I got, and how to get a hold of Kelvin and what all he's up to. I got to give you another website, so I oh, should have done that okay. earlier. I'll make sure make that plug. <laughs> it's NRA ILA, so NRA ILA Frontlines dot com. So okay. that's the grassroots website. That's how you know what NRA Grassroots is up to, and that's how you can re really get involved on uh, on the grassroots level. And he's he's great. It's great to have him. We haven't always had a strong. Uh, NRA grassroots person like him. And so we are very happy to have him living in Kansas yeah. when working hard for us, fighting for us. Well, I won't take up any more of your time because you probably got a few phone calls to make. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> so, or to answer anyhow, but, yeah. uh, but certainly thank you for stopping in. As I say, stopping in. Thank you for, for giving us the time man. uh, here this afternoon. And, uh, and we'll get uh, we'll get the message out as best we can, and uh, and leave that up to folks and what they want to do. Um, but uh, we are two A all day um, here at the Bullet Hole, and uh, that's uh, and it isn't just for for going out and shooting ducks. <laughs> <laughs> we we always you know put that out there that the Second Amendment that was not necessarily what it was designed for. It was designed so, so that the people could stand up against the tyrannical government, and um, so we uh, we're we're pretty hardcore man around here. So <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Thanks for having me on, Lyle. Great to talk you to you, my friend. Well, until next time, folks. As it says behind me, protect, compete, and learn. And uh, come on into the bullet hole. Check out our all of our stuff. We've got training going on constantly. From the very beginning stages, if you're a new shooter, to gun cleaning, to up to pistol three, which is advanced pistol or concealed carry course for the state of Kansas or Missouri, uh, go to our website, thebullethole.com. Go down to the bottom. You can scroll down all the way to the bottom, training and classes. Click on the icon. It'll take you to our, our scheduling. You can pay through even. and ev Everything's just real easy there. Or you can go to our Facebook page. Or Instagram, check out what's going on. Specifically, our Facebook page, which we'll have events on, and you can or you can go to Bullet Hole Training now, um, Bullet Hole Training on Facebook, and see what's going on there as well. And uh, we have our women's program, which is going to be in in the first time uh, the the four week session next week, next Wednesday. So we're excited about that, and we're excited about all the many things that are going on right now. Uh, here at the bullet hole. But until next time, y'all stay safe. Have a great weekend. Get active. And Travis, take care, my friend. We appreciate you. Thanks, Lyle. Appreciate it very much.